Hi, welcome to Chem Camp. I'm Mrs. Newman, and I'd like to go over another AP Chem multiple choice question to help you prepare for the May exam. In fact, do you know that one of the most prevalent topics on the multiple choice section of the AP Chem exam tends to be the concept of intermolecular forces and how exactly they affect things like boiling point, melting point, or even vapor pressure? So if you're gonna know a particular topic, this would be a really good topic to know. So let's learn a little chemistry. The question states, the diagram above shows molecules of Br2 and I2 drawn to the same scale. Which of the following is the best explanation for the difference in boiling points of liquid Br2 and I2, which are 59 degrees Celsius and 184 degrees Celsius, respectively. So, big key here, as soon as they're talking about the difference in boiling points, I automatically think inters or intermolecular forces. The reason being, when a substance is at its boiling point, all of the energy is going into breaking the intermolecular forces or the attractions between different molecules so that that substance can transition from the liquid state to the gaseous state. Now, anytime you're trying to figure out what type of intermolecular forces are involved, you have to analyze what type of substances you have. Now, they do give us two pictures of our substances. However, what might be a little more useful to us is Lewis dot diagrams. So, if we take a look at Br2, you've got two bromine atoms bonded to each other, and then they're each gonna be surrounded by three lone pairs of electrons. Now iodine, believe it or not, is gonna be very similar. Both bromine and iodine have seven valence electrons, so they both form very similar structures. In fact, since both of these are linear molecules and they're perfectly symmetric, they, t they happen to be both nonpolar molecules. And if they're nonpolar molecules, then they're both actually going to experience what's called London dispersion forces, or what I like to call LDFs. So they're not helping us out here, because if they were giving us different intermolecular forces, we'd be able to figure out which one's stronger and answer the question. Here, both of these molecules are experiencing the same type of intermolecular force. So what you have to keep in mind is when you're dealing with London dispersion forces, they're actually what's referred to as induced dipoles. Meaning since they're nonpolar molecules, you actually have to force a dipole moment to happen. So what happens with nonpolar molecules is as they um, float are nearby each other, they wind up colliding with each other. And in the moment that they collide, they distort their electron clouds. And when those electron clouds shift for a moment or an instant, there happens to be a temporary dipole, allowing those two molecules to be attracted to each other. Now, since these types of intermolecular forces need to be induced or forced to happen, they tend to be the weakest type of intermolecular force. So when you're comparing them, what you want to remember is that size matters. You see the larger the nonpolar molecule, when they have collisions, they experience larger distortions in their electron clouds, which allows for stronger temporary dipole moments. So what we say is that the larger the nonpolar molecule, the more polarizable it is. larger nonpolars polars 
are more polarizable. College Board likes this term when referring or talking to London Dispersion Forces, and it'd be a good term to remember for your free response section. Let's take a look at our two molecules then. This is where their diagram comes into play because they've drawn it to the same scale, which clearly indicates to us that I2 is the bigger molecule. If I2 is the bigger molecule, then it's also more polarizable, which means it's going to have stronger LDFs. Now the stronger the intermolecular force, then the higher the boiling point because it's going to require a lot more energy to break those intermolecular forces. So let's take a look at our options here. In letter A, they tell us solid iodine is a network covalent solid, whereas solid bromine is a molecular solid. Well, this just isn't true. Your iodine is also a molecular solid. Your, sol uh, your network covalent solids, they're a very special type of situation. So you're gonna wanna be looking for something like carbon in the diamond form or sand, silicon dioxide. Those are two very good examples of your network covalent solids. In letter B, it states covalent bonds in I2 molecules are weaker than those in Br2 molecules. Well, if they're talking about the covalent bonds within the molecules, they're actually talking about intras. Now, at no point during a boiling point or a melting point are intras ever broken. Those are within the molecule, they're holding the molecule together itself. Those are gonna require much more energy. So intras are never broken at your boiling or melting point. C states, I2 molecules have electron clouds that are more polarizable than those of Br2 molecules. Thus, London dispersion forces are stronger in liquid I2. Well, I really like that answer. Let's just discuss letter D for a second. Letter D says, bromine has a greater electronegativity than iodine. Thus, there are stronger dipole-dipole forces in liquid bromine than in liquid iodine. So again, the first part of the statement is true. Bromine is higher up in the halogen group, so therefore it does have a higher electronegativity. However, that affects the type of bond within the molecule. And since both of these molecules have two of the same type of atom within the molecule, they actually have those nonpolar bonds because they have the exact same electronegativity. And because they're nonpolar, they're not gonna experience dipole-dipole forces. They're gonna experience those London dispersion forces. So letter D is also not an option. I hope this helps you study for your AP Chem exam. For more AP Chem content, continue to follow along. See you soon.